Hi guys, we're Max and Elena, and we are officers on the Minnesota Region 4 officer team. Today we are doing a networking interview with Ms. Fossman. Through these interviews, we reach out to real business professionals to get their insight on what a career in the business field is like. Ms. Fossman, can you tell us a little about yourself? Yeah, um, so I am Ms. Fossman. I'm a business and marketing teacher here at Blaine High School. I was involved in BPA in high school, and I kind of focus on a lot of finance and computer skills classes. So accounting, investing, um, a, a SEMS computer skills for engineers class. Those are kind of my specialty areas as a teacher. Okay, so what does like a typical day-to-day -day in your job look like? So for me, it's it's that traditional school schedule. I have to be at work, you know, by 7, 10 every single day prepping for the day Then I go through um, first, second, third, and fourth hour where I teach my different classes um, through Google Meets. Um, and then fifth hour is my prep hour where I go in and I'm grading and I am preparing obviously for the next day of school. So usually I don't get done working, especially in distance learning. Um, many hours after my contract day ends, but that's kind of that's kind of the typical day, getting to hang out and, and teach and spend time with high school kids and teach them things that I'm really passionate about and I think that they enjoy as well. All right, so what made you decide to pursue this career? So it's a kind of an interesting story for me. I come from a long line of business teachers. My grandma was a business teacher. Um, my mom was a business teacher. She was mine. Growing up in high school, I have a couple different aunts that are business teachers. So it's always been a part of my life. Um, I took a bunch of different business classes in high school and just really enjoyed the curriculum and think that it was really important. Um, well, I probably didn't have much of a choice because my entire family did this, but then I went off to college and, and I didn't necessarily want to be a business teacher. Or I was told that I shouldn't be a business teacher um, for my family members, actually. And so I went to NDSU and got a degree in business management, focusing in human resources. And I worked there for a year at Medtronic um, in their IT department, actually. And I just realized that I wasn't happy. I This is not where my passion was, was working the nine to five in corporate America. Um, and I did a lot of reflection. I was like, no, I, I want to be with high school kids and I want to be a BPA advisor um, and just and do all of the things that I'm doing right now. So I, I made the jump and I made the leap. Blaine had a job opening um, randomly in the school year six years ago and I didn't even have my teaching license at the time and I applied for it and they needed someone and I got the job so then I got my license shortly after that um, and, and haven't looked back since I this is definitely the job for me but that's kind of how I got started in teaching. Nice. Uh, so you said you took a bunch of business classes in high school and I'm guessing in college as well did you do any sort of um, like internships while you were in college? Yeah, I had a couple of different internships. I got, and, and that was kind of the biggest thing when I was at NDSU, I was a part of like a leadership program through the College of Business there. And so I got a lot of different internship opportunities and a lot of networking opportunities. So that's one big thing that I wouldn't ever take for granted is getting to know your professors and really um, putting yourself out there in college. So within that leadership program, I interned at the Better Business Bureau in Fargo, North Dakota, where I was a social media intern, pretty much the only person that did anything social media related um, at that time. And it's changed quite a bit, even in you know eight years ago. But um, I did a lot of marketing, reaching out, running and, and planning different events and banquets for the business um, for the Better Business Bureau up there. So I, I had that job for a year. Um, I also interned, um, it was kind of like a little internship thing as a consultant for um, Clifton Strengths Finder. It's kind of a personality assessment that a lot of businesses use to create teams. So me and my my team that I worked on with at college, we went to like Bobcat Company and we went to Cargill and we went to all these different firms in the Fargo area and also we took a trip down to New York City as well and we did some management consulting as um, as sophomores, juniors in college. That was a great experience for us as well to, to talk about strengths and how that could, focusing on your employee strengths and how that really impacts you later down the road um, as, a, as an employer, as an employee and working with teams. All right, that's great. So what skills are critical to success in your career? Um, for, for me as a teacher, definitely skills of being patient and understanding is really, really important, um, especially in today's age. But just being passionate about what you do and, and having a purpose every single day when you come to school. Um, 
is really, really important. I, I love to build relationships with my students if they're in BPA, if they're not in BPA, whatever, kind of building and, and being able to communicate with high school kids um, is, is definitely a key thing in general. Um, also, just communicating with your peers and communicating with your bosses. Are you sending email? Are you able to effectively talk um, to people is, is huge. And then, you know, this is something that I struggle with, but being time management, especially when I'm needing to update people's grades and everything, it's 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 a it's a challenge. But being able to communicate and being timely with things are two major skills as a teacher. Um, so obviously, the school setting has changed a lot due to the whole pandemic, um, and especially in schools. Obviously, we know how that's been affecting us. Um, how has that? What are some like key major things that have changed as a teacher for you due to moving online? The biggest thing is for me, students and the accountability. Like it's very easy for me to maybe get a little aggressive and make a kid do something when they're right in front of me in class. Like I can, they can turn in their late work. They can do this. They're in my room and they have to be engaged with me, even if they don't like me. They got to be engaged with me in some aspect. But here online, it's challenging because they just don't need to join the Google Meet or they just don't need to do the work. Um, you know, a couple months down the road, I was just kind of talking about that, too. And that's been the biggest challenge and the biggest struggle is not being able to interact with some of these students based on whatever reason that they have. Um, something that I was surprised with for me as a human being is the lack of communication that I'm having with my students. Like you, many people that have had me know that I just maybe go off the rails a little bit and we're just talking about this, that, and the other thing. But that's such a big part of building relationships too because then there's, a, I feel like there's a connection with the students and they're gonna wanna work a little bit harder for me because we have a good relationship. Um, but when students have their cameras off, I have no idea if I'm making any sense at all with them because it's so much of the nonverbals um, that, that students give, that I give to people. It's really, really big as a teacher. So that's been a struggle for me as well. But you know, you know, whenever there's a struggle, you gotta think about an alternative solution to help yourself out as well. So the, the being creative and in getting some of those feedback loops has been something that I've definitely practiced quite a bit this trimester. Now, as a teacher, of course, you have to deal with a lot of stress in your job, especially with it going online, that adds. So how do you manage stress and pressure as a teacher? Um, I do a lot of breathing and yoga, some like mindfulness sort of things. Um, and that has been, that's been interesting. I needed to do a lot of self-reflection because I, I am an emotional person. I get worked up pretty fast or I fly off the handle quick and then I calm down as you both know. Um, but just it, when I when I feel myself getting frustrated, I think back to the positives of my job, being able to spend time with the officer team and looking at the great things that the BPA officer team is doing or people that are really succeeding in my classes. Um, I need to think back and, and think about those positive situations that I have been a part of to, rem to remind myself that I'm not the world's worst teacher when I look at my grade book and we've got a lot of people failing. Um, so those, those reflective practices are really important, but there's some times that I just need to stand up, you know, go for a quick walk, um, do a little bit of yoga and breathing and, and just remove myself from my computer um, and do a little bit of physical activity and that really helps me quite a bit as well. So you said earlier that um, it can be hard to manage uh, like your time with grading and everything. Do you have any ways that you've found to help you manage your time and like meet deadlines as a teacher? Yes, I and I do this even in college too. Like I'm definitely a note writer. This is everything that I need to get done today. So I get my notes kind of ready to go and I date them like this is what I need to do. Um, but sometimes and I think that this happens to a lot of people is I write down too many things on my to do list that's not manageable. Like I can't like that. This could be a 50 hour work day. And I've only got, you know, realistically 12 hours that I should be able to do this. And that's even too much, in my opinion. Um, so how, you know, I kind of break down, like, what are the high priority items that I need to do? Um, and I put, like, must be done by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever that case may be. Um, but the other thing that I did, and this was big in college, is I kind of had have people to hold me accountable. So there's times that I even, like, text my friends from college or go talk to my roommates. I, go, I say, okay. 
I've got one hour. I need to get done with this and this in the hour. Me just literally telling somebody and saying it out loud makes me get focused and do that stuff. It is the weirdest thing. I did that in college all the time. My room, my call old college roommates laugh at me. They're like, Oh my gosh, Rachel, what are you doing right now? You're 27 years old. Like you still need this. Yes, I do. So I just text them like, all right, I need to get done with accounting one grading and this in that hour. Um, and they're like, okay, good luck. And then that just helps me get done with things. It's just that little piece of accountability because I don't like to let people down. That really helps me quite a bit. Now, for people who are looking to potentially become teachers, what would you say is looked for in job applicants? You know, someone with, especially in business ed, someone with a vast experience level. So I think it's really important. And I, even though I didn't love my time at Medtronic, I don't take that for granted at all because I learned a lot about IT and I learned a lot about corporate America in that year that I had worked there along with my internships. So being able to have that real world business experience or the real world experience is so impactful because you can bring that into work um, and you can talk about those things to kind of give yourself a little bit more credibility as well. Um, I think that's really big, but also, um, you know, the, the flexibility as a teacher and especially as a business teacher at Blaine High School, we offer over 15 different business classes. And at any moment in time or any trimester, I might be teaching Java programming. Or when I first started, I taught video game design. That was not in my wheelhouse whatsoever. But you need to be flexible and you need to have that willingness to be a learner. And I think that is, that's for sure as a teacher, but that's in any job. You're not going to get the answers right away. You're not going to know everything right away. Um, but as long as you have the, um, the discipline and the determination to learn and to grow as a professional in any career field, that is going to be huge in life. All right. So obviously to be a business teacher, you'll have had to take in some business classes. Are there any like specific areas, maybe even outside of business that you would say educationally are a good thing to look into? Obviously, I'm a big, big advocate for business classes. Um, so I, I love in high school, like taking a, even if you're not interested in going into business, taking a basic keyboarding class is huge. Being able to know how to keyboard, it's going to make you so much more efficient. Um, but also one thing, and I don't really teach this class a whole lot anymore, is like a personal finance class. Lots of people leave high school with not knowing how to have a budget or how to follow a budget or what life looks like after high school. You know, I, I graduated from college and I had $60,000 in student loans. That number to me was, what's $60,000? I mean, like I had, I have no idea what that, how that impact is or buying a car or, um, new or used and, and all those things that a personal finance class is gonna teach you is so critical in high school. Um, the other class that I think was, or the other couple of classes that I think were really, really beneficial that I took in high school was a, like a speech class or a communications class. Um, being able to publicly speak and be eloquent is so important. And then obviously business teachers can teach you how to make a good PowerPoint and all that stuff. I think that's really critical. Um, along with, I, it was called college composition when I was in high school, but it was just a, a college writing class where you learned how to format documents and format these papers, do good research and, and do like research and understand what, um, what sources are good and not. And I think that especially in today's world, that is really important to understand where you're getting some of your info and is it legit or not. So those are a couple of classes that I'm like, yep, really glad that I took that um, in my high school time. All right. So you did mention that you were in BPA in high school. And how did BPA, has it contributed to success in your job? And are there any other extracurricular activities that you took in high school or college that have contributed? to um, your success in your job? Yeah, I mean, for sure, BPA has contributed to me being able to be right here now and being able to talk about the different events, um, just having the general skills that are successful in BPA. Um, I, that, that's huge for me. But even people that aren't, obviously, I'm very much business teacher, BPA life, but both of my sisters, but, uh, pretty much all of my friends were in BPA in high school. Um, and people outside, and they are not business teachers. And they continue to talk about how BPA has really impacted their lives, even when they're 30, 35 years old. Um, just being able to, to create something and present on that. BPA students are learning such valuable skills 
in a setting that they're not getting really graded on, essentially like in school, that you're practicing these 21st century workplace skills when you're a freshman in high school. And it might just be formatting documents, but it's being timely. You have 90 minutes to create all those things. Or maybe it's giving a presentation or it's it's just something um, you're not going to lose any skills when you're in VPA, I guess. And so people talk about that quite a bit, even like creating a resume, giving those interviews, presenting on a project that you and a, or a team has created so valuable. And that is, it, it definitely helped with confidence when I was in high school, you know, presenting on my digital media productions and everything. Um, so that was definitely BPA has shaped who I am today as a person. Um, other activities that I was in, in high school, I was involved in, I grew up in a very small school, so it was easy to be involved in lots of different things. Um, but student council at NHS, I was um, a golfer on the volleyball team. I was in marching band and jazz band and all that stuff. Um, and really doing those different team activities and working with other people, you're not going to like every single person you, and you're not going to vibe with every single person that you work with. And that's just a no duh sort of statement to me. But learning how to navigate different personalities and how to navigate different leadership styles and working on a team is so valuable and so beneficial because that's life is working with other people um, and understanding how to be professional and and. Believe you me, I made some mistakes when I was in high school, but I learned from those mistakes on how to communicate um, to to work in different teams and work with different people now. All right. So obviously you're familiar with BPA. Um, what like area of BPA events do you think would be most helpful for somebody trying to go into a business education sort of area? Ooh, what's most helpful? It depends. I, it, this is very much a depends sort of statement. Like it depends on what facet of business education you're going to teach. Like if I was focusing on like the computer programming classes, then I would say, well, definitely like the management information system sort of competitions are going to be really important um, for me as a kind of a finance and a computer skills Microsoft teacher. The administrative support events are huge, and that's what I was really big in in high school. And then also like taking those tests and doing presentations for a financial analyst team or whatnot. So it really kind of depends on what your skill set is. You're not going to go wrong with any sort of an event, um, but kind of in general, doing any sort of done event, probably more specifically the marketing management and human resources events are going to be helpful because you're because you're doing that project. You're creating something beforehand. You're working individually. You're working with the team and then you're presenting um, the hard work that you have created. And so any any sort of event like that, the judged um, sort of thing is definitely going to be beneficial um, in all aspects of teaching and in all aspects of just being a professional in the working world. All right. And lastly, do you have any tips or advice for students who plan on pursuing a business related career? Yeah, I, um, no, definitely. That's one of my favorite parts of being a teacher is talking about what types of career paths that people should go in. And a big thing is don't get set in your ways too early. Um, you might think that you wanna do something when you're in high school and you might know what skill sets you have, but once you go off into the working world or once you go to college, be open to change your mind and, and not what your parents think, not what you're told what you should do. Cause if I, did that, then I would be doing something totally different than, than where I'm at right now. Um, but just kind of following what what is easy for you to learn. And that was a big thing that I had heard when I was in college. When I, when I was working at Medtronic, it was hard for me to go to work. I wasn't passionate about what I was doing. But once I started taking more business education classes um, and things that I was really interested in, it was easy to learn and it was easy to go to school and work hard. And it would be it's, it's easy to work hard at your job when you're passionate about it. And even though it's still going to be hard work, it just is more fun. Um, so, so finding that passion and finding and not being set in your ways are going to be big things to, to focus on. And then also apply yourself, right? Like network with your professors, get those internships, do the interviews, mock interviews, all of these things to help you get ready to find that passion and to find that career um, of your choice. All right. And then as like a fun closing question, um, while you were in BPA, what was like your favorite memory in BPA? And also what were your, your favorite events to compete in for BPA? Okay. So my favorite event for sure is integrated office applications. That is 
exhilarating. Being in the Hyatt Regency in that little ballroom, typing away, getting your printouts, and then it didn't, when you put that X in there, it was just 90 minutes, your heart's pounding. It, it was absolutely the greatest thing in the entire world. Um, so that was my favorite event for sure. But my favorite memory of BPA, probably all of the state, well, nationals was super, were super fun too. But like the state conferences, because I was with all of my best friends from high school, like staying in a hotel room, downtown Minneapolis. I'm from a small, small town, two and a half hours away. The first time I had Chipotle was at state BPA my senior year of high school. Like you got to walk down to Target, you got to stop at Chipotle. And like, it was just so different than where I grew up. Um, and that was awesome. Just spending time with my friends, competing, doing something that I loved, like working like when I needed to, but just getting to know people and, and having fun. Those were by far my favorite memories for the state conferences. All right, well, that's about it. So Ms. Bosman, thank you for being with us here today. We appreciate you giving us your time and your knowledge to help BPA members on their journey to success in the business world. Absolutely, thank you.